Hey guys, Dr. Mike Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization and Juggernaut Training Systems. I'm going to talk to you about how to get a hypertrophied large chest. So just some really cool basic framework tips for how to go about constructing a program that maximizes your attempt at large chest size. Right, uh, very, very mythical, sought after sort of muscle group. We've got some really good tips because on the one hand, while a lot of individuals attempt to get large chest, not a lot of people succeed, and there are a lot of bumps in the road, a lot of uh, sort of misinformation and problems people run into. Now, we're gonna get just a couple of really good tips for you guys here. For more in-depth information, we have a whole article series for you that you can link right into from this video that really breaks this down step by step. So let's get going. First, what is the minimum volume that you have to do to at least maintain your chest size? Why is this important? Well, if you want to take a break from chest training, let your muscles resensitize to try to get bigger later, which is a good idea every now and again, we don't know what the minimum amount of work is that we don't end up doing way too much stuff and not letting our muscles resensitize. Generally speaking, about eight sets a week for chest. What does that mean? Do four sets of bench press on Monday, four sets of incline press, on Thursday, and you can do that as long as you train very hard for weeks on end and not lose any chest size. So when you do need to back away from chest training, let's say that you've burned it out for too long, too much volume, and chest isn't responsive anymore, going down to only eight sets of chest a week, maybe prioritizing other things, is a good idea every now and again. Now, what's the smallest amount of volume for most people, and remember these are just average uh, values, average figures, that will get the chest to grow? Well, usually 10 or more sets a week. So if you've got a program you designed that's six sets of chest a week that are hard, it's probably not gonna result in much or any muscle growth at all. But more than 10 sets a week or 10 sets or more is a good start at which to begin your mesocycle volume. The MRV or max or cardio volume, generally speaking around 20 uh, to 22 sets per week for most individuals. Most individuals won't be able to sustainably handle over 20 sets of chest per week and actually make gains. It'll be just at where you can recover or even more so for most individuals. So what does that mean? That means the maximum adaptive volume is somewhere in between those two ranges, 12 to 20 sets a week, which really means that if you start your mesocycle at about 10 to 12 sets per week of chest and slowly over the weeks add sets to build up to about 20 sets of chest per week, on average, those figures can go by uh, two to four sets depending on your particular genetics and situation. If you go from about 10 to about 20 sets of chest per week, adding sets throughout the week, deloading and then repeating, that's where most of the growth will happen. So if you look at your chest program that you wanted to run now, if it's like five sets of chest per week, it's probably not gonna get you your biggest. If it's more than 25 sets per chest per week, you probably won't be able to recover from that. Anywhere between 12 and 20 is a really, really good first step. As far as training frequency, how often do you train your chest? If you're training your chest hard for it to grow, overloading sets, probably three times a week is the most most individuals can handle. I've seen four time a week chest training pan out for some individuals. For most people, the chest is a fairly complex, large muscle that takes a lot of damage. Usually four is a bit too much. Three work, actual overloading workouts per week is good. For individuals that are very large, very strong chests, when you're benching over 400, something like that, you can be as low as one and a half overloading chest workouts per week. What the hell is a half workout? Well, that's basically you have one big main overloading chest workout. Later in the week, you have a workout that hits chest to some extent, maybe with, oh, four to six total sets, maybe after triceps or after shoulders. Those aren't super overloading sets, but they let the chest hang in there from a back burner. They help with more recovery, maybe a little bit more growth. That way you have a big workout at the beginning of the week, small workout later, and you repeat every week like that. Now that's only if you have a huge chest. Most individuals will benefit from two to three overloading chest sessions per week. Intensity. From my personal experience in working with lots and lots of clients and programming for lots of individuals, high reps, super high reps generally don't work that well for chest. As a matter of fact, some individuals can grow from the five to eight rep range really, really well. That's why one of the best ways to get a big chest is to bench relatively heavy. For a lot of other exercises, it doesn't really work, or for a lot of other muscle groups, you know, you don't really come up and someone has really big biceps and you say, man, you must curl a whole lot for just a couple reps. Eh, it doesn't really work like that, but if you ask someone if they can bench a lot, if the answer is yes, usually they have really big chest, that's not by accident. The chest generally tends to be composed 
of a higher percentage of fast twitch, very large muscle fibers that are really responsive to high forces. The most I generally tend to program or tend to see that working is sets of 12. After 12, sets of 15, 18, and things like that, you'll get a pretty good burn, but not much of a pump. You won't get very sore, and a lot of times that won't result in a lot of chest size. So my personal advice to you is if you want a bigger chest, keep it anywhere between five and 12 reps on average for most of your working sets. That's where most of the action happens. So for chest, there's really three basic kinds of exercises you want to include on average in most of your weekly and monthly programming. Horizontal pressing movements that hit the majority of your chest, especially the sternal head. Incline pressing movements that hit the clavicular head and are especially prized for bodybuilders that want a big upper chest. And isolation movements for chest. Anytime you program, most times you program for the chest, you want at least one kind or several kinds of horizontal moves per week, at least one kind of incline move, and at least an isolation move. Now, do you have to do all three of them evenly? Absolutely not. You can go an entire month or a mesocycle where you do mostly horizontal pressing, just a little bit of isolation work, just a little incline work. You can go another month where it's a lot of isolation work, just a bit of compound work, and yet another month where it's a lot of incline work and just a bit of the other two, and anyway. But most weeks should have all all three elements of that program to some extent. Now, range of motion is a big deal for chest training. If you want to make it really hard on yourself, you can do the half dumbbell pressers or something like that. You can get a spotter to lift half the weight for you and not get a stretch, not get a good contraction, and actually increase your risk of injury. If you want a really, really big chest, you got to throw the ego out the door. Now, does that mean you lift light? No way. You lift heavy in that rep range, but that makes means you take the barbell movements almost usually all the way down to your chest and all the way up to lockout. Dumbbells for a big stretch, that range of motion, especially for the way the pec muscle is designed, Designed, puts a whole lot of stress on the pec and actually independently allows it to grow. So for dumbbell flies that you do with a real big stretch, those almost always pay off. Can you use as much weight? No way, but the actual forces your muscles experience and the weight experiences through stretching is much better for growth. So the good news is you, can, you should only be doing weights that you can control for a good number of repetitions. You don't have to go super ultra crazy heavy and endanger yourself. The bad news is if you're used to half benching something, you're going to take a big ego hit doing things the right way. But I promise doing them the right way is going to result in a whole lot of growth. So range of motion is really big for chest training, and a lot of people make a big mistake. Now, there are a couple of really cool special metabolite techniques that work pretty well for chest. One really good one is to take your favorite fly movement or isolation movement and pair it superset style with your favorite press. So for example, you set up just a machine pec deck fly and do about 12 reps on that. As soon as you're done, a couple reps away from fail, you run right over to an already preloaded barbell incline press and do as many as you can like that. What ends up happening is your chest is already have a high metabolite load in it from those flies, as soon as you go to incline, your shoulders are fresh, your triceps are fresh, they're not going to be the limiting factor. Your chest is already the limiting factor, so the amount of metabolites in there, it just goes crazy. It's a huge pump, you'll get a ton of soreness, and that works really well. So that's a really good metabolite technique to try if you haven't tried it yet. Another one is what we call our special technique we're going to leave you guys off with, is, is what I call an isolation sandwich. So we have a little bit of a conundrum in chest training. Metabolite training works really well, and isolation movements work really well. But if you do them first in a program, the good news is you, you get a good feel for the chest. The bad news is you can't use a lot of high force pressing movements because your chest is so tired from isolation work. So if pre-exhausting is good but has a limitation that you can't train super heavy, super heavy training is good but it has a limitation that you can't pre-exhaust before it, where do we go? Well, we can solve both problems with the isolation sandwich. What is that? We start out with a compound pressing move, let's say incline barbell press. After that, five sets later, we go do a couple of sets of an isolation move, of flies or something like that. And then we end our workout with maybe wide grip push-ups or dumbbell press, another compound press. So that isolation to compound gives us that awesome metabolite effect and that pre-exhaust, but we started the workout with a big compound press so we got our heavy work out of the way. So we go heavy compound, isolation, and then lighter compound, that sandwich together probably gives us the best of both worlds. I would really highly recommend you give that a shot. If a lot of the stuff seems really awesome and you want to know more, check out the linked article that goes much more in depth about chest training and renaissance periodization. And if this stuff seems cool but you want a little more structure to your training, check out the male physique templates also linked. Give those a shot. We've had really good reviews on them so far. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Dr. Mike Hinsertel for Renaissance Periodization and Juggernaut Training Systems. 
Sports Nutrition is committed to providing athletes with the highest quality supplements to fuel their training. Grind products are designed by Renaissance Periodization and contain only ingredients and dosages with substantial bodies of evidence to support their effectiveness. No fluff or fillers. Get on your grind because your success is earned, not given.